Hi, my name is Carolyn and I'm the owner of Carolyn's Absolutely Fabulous Events, a small catering company. And I think some of you may already know me, I've been the one doing the teas at the DCA um, and in previous years I've done the women's lunches and had great fun a couple of years ago doing the art lecture lunches. More recently I've been doing the grazing boards at the author talks and um, hoping that we'll get back to some socialisation quite soon. But meantime, Amy, Belle and Lisa Joyce came and asked me if I would like to do a couple of videos for the DCA members and I was absolutely delighted to be asked. Very quick notice but this is Easter weekend coming up and I have one cake that I make every year for Easter. It's a flourless chocolate cake and I thought I would share that with you for um, our first effort. I'm going to get set up but the first thing we do, so it's a flourless um, chocolate uh, ganache cake. I use almond flour. I do have another recipe that doesn't need almond flour. So if you're having difficulties tracking that down, I'm going to give you um, a link to my website at the end of this. And I'm sure it will be in the blurb as well. And if you, if you follow the link, that should take you to the, the other recipe, which just has um, chocolate, eggs, butter. And cream so it's a little bit easier to source those ingredients but if you do happen to have almond flour and it's at the moment it's easier to find than regular flour this is a great recipe both the recipes actually to be honest come out pretty much the same but for some reason this is the one I've always used so it's a cake and it's actually a cake that's better made the day before it's it sits and it gets really um, sort of moist if you keep it in the fridge overnight and on top of that we're going to put a chocolate ganache and then on top of that we are going to um, put some eggs. The other option is to put raspberries on, and um, that looks very pretty for all year round. But since we're heading towards the chocolate fest, and CVS is full of these, um, I would recommend that if you can, if you can, just pick some up. If not, come round to me because I seem to have plenty. My camera's just gone off. Let me hit press. There we are. Um, I never know whether I'm on or off. Right, I've I lost you. So we're going to start off making the ganache because that needs, needs to be made ahead of time. It really needs to cool down before you use it, um, either on the kitchen counter or overnight in the fridge. And for that, I'm going to show you how to make a small amount. Um, I quite often make a larger amount. It freezes really well, and it's just a great thing to have in, have in the fridge, just a chocolate sauce if you want to have it with ice cream or strawberries or I don't know anything you use chocolate sauce for. So how, how we do this, we, we just measure a cup, which is like half a pint of uh, heavy cream. And we're going to put that straight in a pan. And that we are going to scald, which is a technical term, which means we're going to bring it just up to simmering point. We're not going to boil it, but up to simmering point. So let me do that. While that's heating up, let me talk about the chocolate. So I must admit, I like um, a mix of chocolate. So I've got some uh, milk chocolate buttons, which I think I picked up. This is all they had left in Whole Foods the other day. But what I normally use in Dalian, it's Trader Joe's. These Belgian um, chocolate blocks are absolutely delicious. So they do this, this is the dark chocolate, and they also do a milk chocolate one. And I thought a few weeks ago I had bought enough chocolate to see me through. But it turns out that um, not. Uh, so when I went to the cupboard, there was none of the, the milk chocolate left, but luckily I had some other milk chocolate. I use a sort of half 50-50. Um, sorry, I got a little distracted there. This is the one of the, um, the joys of having a high school of people that everyone's wandering sort of backwards and forwards and I didn't put a you know, filming and process sign up. So as I was saying, I normally do 50-50, um, half milk, half dark chocolate, because I'm not a big lover of dark chocolate. And the other option is just to pick up some of these semi-sweet um, and you can do the whole eight ounces with those. But like I say, I do half and half. And then what we do, is once this is just um, 
can see it's just steaming, just coming up to the boil. You simply pour that over and we're going to leave it for five minutes and that will melt the chocolate. And that's really all you need to do. Maybe a little bit of salt in there if we want. We could add a teaspoon of honey. I'm just going to put a little bit of salt because salted chocolate's very trendy. So let's just leave that for five minutes and um, I'm going to tidy this up, switch you off for two seconds and we'll come back and we'll make the cake. So before we get on to making the cake, I'm just going to show you this ganache has been sitting. So the chocolate is really basically melted. And what you're now doing is just getting all the cream mixed up with the chocolate. And this is just going to form a beautiful soft ganache. I just can stop you some chunks in here actually. Not to the end. You can see it's starting to thicken up. So once that is all completely mixed, you just set that to one side, either in the kitchen, or if you want, do it a bit faster and leave it in the fridge for a couple of hours and that should get quite um, set, nice and thick. It's a little thin to use just now. So that's all done. You can see it's still quite a soft consistency, um, but that will definitely firm up over time. Now onto the cake itself. This is a really fairly straightforward cake. We take, um, well to begin with, we need to make a little bit more uh, chocolate to make the sort of squidgy center. So you're gonna take six ounces of chocolate. And again, I use a mix of plain and milk, and then six ounces of butter, which is a stick and a half. And we're going to just heat that over a pan of, again, simmering water. Just cut your butter into chunks like this. And cut your chocolate into chunks as well. And then just place that over a pan of simmering water until it's all melted. And then you're going to have to leave that just to cool down just slightly so it doesn't um, mess with the eggs too much before it goes in the oven. Let's just put that on first. Get that on. Keep an eye on that. And meantime, the rest of the ingredients are four eggs, which you split. You take the egg yolks into one. Can you see this now? Uh, egg yolks are in here. And um, you put the egg whites in here. And I don't know, just a little note when you're splitting eggs, I did this beforehand, I should have maybe waited to show you, was always break an egg and break the white into a small bowl before you add it to the main bowl because if you get any bits of the egg yolk in them it will really mess with how they whisk up. So we're going to take the egg whites and into that we're going to put a quarter cup of sugar and then there's half a cup of sugar will go into this uh, four egg yolks and we're just going to whisk these by hand and the only other ingredient is a cup of ground almonds. So I'm just going to get the egg yolks. And just mix them up until they're really combined. And then we're also going to put this on. I know it's a little bit noisy, so let's just bear with it. We're going to push these, and again, you're looking for stiff beats. And while we're doing that, and we're waiting for the, the chocolate to melt, I'm going to show you the tins I use. Somewhere along the way, I was very clever and bought this heart shaped dish. I have no idea where it came from, but honestly, I use it all the time. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to make with this just a regular spring form and you want to just grease it and line it with a piece of parchment paper. So I little these, and this is the one I'll use for today. I just fast forward this bit. I've 
melted the chocolate and it's been cooled down slightly. You can't add it straight away. You put the eggs, so we're pretty much ready to go. So what you want to do is just tip all that lovely chocolatey butter into the bowl. Get all of it out. So it's kind of similar to brownie, I suspect, in sort of technique. Except then you're going to be adding in the mixed egg whites, which will give it a different texture. But you're still going for that kind of squidge in the middle. So you mix all that in and then add in your cup of ground almonds. By the way, I forgot to add the, the almonds one time and it didn't seem to make a huge amount of difference. I think the other recipe that I'm talking about adds an extra two eggs, which gives it a slightly more bulk. Um, and I think it's possibly slightly more chocolate. It's all kind of the same. So we're just mixing all that in before we fold in the egg whites. And I should have said you have to preheat the oven to 350 or about 160 um, centigrade. Let's get a nice big spoon so we can fold in those egg whites. These are looking really nice. So when you're folding in, sometimes it's worthwhile just to start with a little bit, just to kind of loosen the mixture. So take one large spoonful and fold it in. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just doing a circle and then pulling it through the middle. And once you've done that, we can add the rest of the egg whites. like a soft peak where they sort of hold their own shape but they slight like fall over if you start playing with them too much. So again just mix all of this in and what you're looking for once the cake is in the oven and steaming for about 30-40 minutes my usual bake timings and um, it will rise as you take it out of the oven, the centre will fall again, and that is completely normal. And it's the ideal place to pour a chocolate ganache into. So you can see it's all completely mixed in now. And we're going to pour it into our prepared tin. going on just like without giving yourself a dodgy tummy. So just smooth that out. And then just get the spatula and get the very last bits of chocolatey goodness. And I hope that you have most of these ingredients at home. I know shopping just now is a little stressful. I went yesterday the first time in eight days and I'm hoping not to have to go again for quite some time. But I managed to get eggs and butter and a little bit of flour this time, which was quite nice. So we'll just level this out. And tap it once. And we're going to throw this in the oven, I think it's around about 40 minutes, but it's like all good things, you need to just keep an eye on it. So after about 30 minutes, I would start prodding it a little bit with um, a toothpick to see if it comes out. You want it squidgy, but fairly set in the middle. And we'll get that to once that's out of the oven. Oh, can't reach. We're at the final stages. So the cake has come out of the oven and 
before you take this cake out, it's quite fragile, make sure that you leave it to cool down. Mine's actually been in the fridge overnight now. And you can see that it indents quite nicely here. But we now have to get it from here onto the plate. <laughs> so clever, I also have a heart shaped plate. And to do that, I'm going to use a big plate. So wish me luck with this. And then just take a knife around the edge. And just loosen it up slightly. And hopefully this will release. Nope. So, I'm going to take the cake out of the tin off camera. I'm afraid <laughs> the first time it's slightly stuck on me, but I've managed to put it all back together again. And I'm just going to continue with the demonstration so you can see what it's supposed to look like. Uh, but that was quite funny, it never happened to me before. I have the dog behind me as well. I've got the uh, chocolate ganache. Um, it's been in the fridge overnight, uh, so it's got quite um, solid and dense. So the best way to bring it back up to a nice consistency is to put it in the microwave on defrost. Now this was probably in for just over a minute. Keep an eye on it because you don't want it to get too, um, too hot. Otherwise you're just back to the beginning again, having to wait for it to cool down. So you can see it's just a nice spreading consistency. The good thing about this, it will hide a multitude of scents. So we'll just kind of put it up around all the little cracks that I seem to have in my somewhat um, lopsided heart. And that's the good thing about baking. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. It all turns out and tastes lovely. And, the, that's the, and also we're home bakers. It's not meant to be perfect. So you can use all the ganache if you want. Sometimes I just save a little because as I say, it is very, very lovely on um, ice cream. Like I was making ice cream sundaes the other day um, with some leftover fruit. And then the last thing we're going to do is put the, what have I done with them? Put the chocolate eggs on. Give them two secs. So you can put raspberries, um, and that's what I normally do. Um, or you can even just like this and just maybe put a little bit of powdered sugar on it. But for Easter, I think it's fun to do the eggs. Because you can never have quite enough chocolate. So with that, I am going to wish you a very happy Easter. I hope that you managed to spend it with some of your loved ones and managed to contact all the ones who are not with you. And there I am. I'm sending you my somewhat lopsided heart, but all my love.